record. So, how are you feeling, Sarah? You good? Perfect. Awesome. Um, anybody else? Lieutenant. Hi. Good to see you. All right. Um, so one thing that I think we can lean into a little bit here. I start, I talked about it on my Facebook yesterday. Um, you guys can certainly go listen to it. It's geared more towards um, people that, you know, are not in the tribe. But I did a con, I talked a little bit about, and it's funny, we had a team coach call too last night and we talked about this as well. The difference between, and I think this is something that can resonate or we all need reminders of. On Sunday night, I actually um, took a, a class and it kind of reminded me of some of these things. And the difference between like change and transformation. One thing that you guys want to like, well, let me ask you this. I'm not going to tell you. Are you guys changing or are you transforming? You can either come off of mute or you can type it in the chat. Transform. Transforming. <laughs> Do you know the difference between change and transformation? So. I feel the difference. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the visual that I did on Facebook it was a terrible ass drawing. So let me try to do it again. So change is like when you take a triangle and you change it, right? So you can change it multiple ways, right? You just, you just change it. Transformation is when you take the triangle, you turn it into a circle, a square, and y'all are gonna y'all are stars, right? It's making things different. So that's important to know because transformations are it's a process that you guys go through. And you know, and I'm gonna kind of lean into it because you know, even with Sarah having a little bit of anxiety this morning, like we all get this. We get these point points of it, like, holy shit, you know, you know, Megan, oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to eat. Um, you know, we're all, we all get these points of where we, we plateau or we get anxious, or sometimes we even just like, is this ever going to happen type of thing? Like change or transformation is harder than change. Change guys is changing your clothes. Change is changing your hair color. Change is painting the wall a different color. Transformation is like, if you want to think about it in a house aspect, it's blowing out fucking walls, okay? Putting additions on, things like that. You're literally transforming everything inside and out, making it look, feel, and act different or behave differently. So, you know, because if you transform a house, you remodel a house, it behaves completely different versus if you paint a color, change the the wall color of a wall you just change the color of it make sense so there's this big there's this like so what you have to think about and i'm sharing this because you're gonna go through this at different stages as you are going on this journey so we talk about building a foundation and many of you in here are have done a good job of building a foundation many of you in here are starting to build the foundation and doing phenomenal and by the way i meant to do this earlier every single one of you should give yourselves a high fucking five for being on this call. Like you should all just high five yourselves because those of you that show up to these calls on a regular basis, you are the ones that are really making the biggest results. Very rarely, um, that's like part of the process is showing up for yourself. So high five for being here. And if you're not always here, you know, tuning into the replays is always important as well. But I wanted to make sure I pointed that out and celebrated you guys for being on these calls and committing to be to them. But you have to, like, we talked a little bit about this last week and it's a really good exercise. I've given it to some of you to do. It's an exercise that doesn't hurt any of you guys to do at any point in time, but letting go of shit. Like, 
you have this little box, okay? I'm gonna just show you the picture that I showed. I have numbers written on it because I was doing something else on Facebook. So like you have a peak in a valley, so you have a mountain. So when you transform, you start down here, okay? I don't know what the numbers are for. I was doing something. I have scribble pieces of paper all over the place. And this one got scribbled on after I did a demo with it. So down here is like where you all started when you got on a phone call with me and you signed up. You were down here and you wanted to be up here. Okay. This is like the, the fountain of youth, the glory land, wherever you want to be. But down here, you have this box or this framework or whatever you want to call it that you currently or were living in. And it's full of things that you really don't have a lot of control over. It's full of self-limiting beliefs. It's full of patterns and habits that you have had or had developed coming through life. Many of you are 40, 50, 60 years old. That's a lot of shit. I think Megan's one of the youngest ones in here. That is a lot of shit and a lot of years of habits and values like pulling into you to be letting go. And these are things that you're, you learned as a child, okay? Your parents taught you some of these things. Lisa. <laughs> not just kidding. Your parents taught you some of these things. Um, you learn them from society, these habits and values that came into you. So that's hard to let them go. But what you're looking to do is this box up here has a completely different framework to it. Because that's what we talk about when you're building a foundation. We want to build a strong foundation for you. And that's where we're climbing you, we're building that foundation. We're, we're shortening the gap if you will, okay? Because this is a very fucking long gap and it's hard to jump all the way up here. So taking steps to get here, habit stacking our way up there, like just stacking, going one after another. So every time you create a new habit and value, you are strengthening your foundation and closing the gap between where you started and where you got. Does that make sense? cracks in the foundation and the you know the stronger you build the foundation the easier it is once you get up into this new framework because your new framework will exist with all the things that you desire that you've desired from the time that you got here and transformation guys is, is basically freedom when you trans, when you create a transformation in your life, be it health, wealth, or relationships, everything else will follow. So you transform your body, everything else is going to start to fall suit because of the emotions that it invokes. You can ask anybody in here that's done it. You can ask Stacy. You know, um, some of the women, Rita for God's sakes, you can ask Jen, even Carrie, like Carrie's made some big changes in a short amount of time and has talked about the shifts that she's made in her life. And I'm sure you've all experienced it, but it'll just get stronger and stronger as you go. So thinking, remembering that, that you're building this foundation and you just are creating habits and values. And that is the most important aspect of this program Nutrition and fitness is super important, but it means fucking nothing if you can't wrap your head around it. So you have to be, what I mean by that is you have to be super clear with yourself. If you, you can do nutrition, you can do fitness, but if your head isn't in the game and if you're like, eh, I don't really do that. It's not really like, I don't like whatever story you tell yourself, I can't do that. This is the way I used to do this. These are the things that I do. I'll give you a good example. Holidays are coming up. I'm not telling you guys that anybody is going to restrict themselves, but well, this is what I do. Like, fuck this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I celebrate holidays with food. I'm, I'm really exaggerating. But if you lean into those things, like, Oh, it's just one, you know, it's just one month out of the year. It's only one whatever out of the year. 
that's a mindset versus looking for a different approach, looking for a different way of looking at it. Yes, I'm going to enjoy the holidays. However, my health and fitness is a priority. What are some of the ways that I can look at these things differently? Can I make things healthier? Can I, God, again, we've had this, there are certain things that you really, really want. Um, and I don't know who it was last year, but we had this conversation. And like, if you, all, if you just look forward to sweet potato pie or some damn thing every single year, have it. But the idea is you'll probably only have probably four bites, three, four bites of it, and you'll be satisfied. And the reason why is because it's not something that you do anymore to make you feel good or to celebrate or to reward yourself you now are enjoying the sweet potato pie because it's something that you look forward to. So now it's like three, four bites and you're like, cool, sweet, I'm good. I don't need to divulge the whole thing and then go after the candy jar and this is spirals out of control. So the mind is the biggest tool, guys. And I'm using that as an example, but there's numerous ways that the mind can come in. And this bucket down here, what it's full of, it's full of a lot of emotion. It's, you've been taught, like, like, food is a reward. Food is a punishment. Food is something that makes us feel good. Food, food, food. And it's not. It really is not. You know, you can look at it as... Well, I live a life of restriction. No, you live a very healthy life. You're using food the way it was intended to be used as fuel. And yes, we lean into the human aspect that we've all come to be cultivated, created into whatever you want to say based on years of society saying, no, you're not an animal. You're a human, you have emotions, and you emotionally use food for things. Because like, that's just something that freaking commercials and society has taught us. It's taught us that food is this... Look at it. Did the, if you want to be real, what did the caveman do with food? We evolved from a caveman. I'm not telling you not to enjoy it. But I, like we will say like... I want to eat normal again. Will I ever eat normal? Sometimes people will say to you, hey, Jennifer McCombs, are you ever going to eat normal again? My reaction to people like that would be, I do eat normal. What is so normal about Big Macs, French fries, heavy, like fast food, like that's normal? I've literally looked at people and said that. That's normal. I tell my people I eat whole foods. <laughs> I eat food that's good for my body and nourishes me. Mm -hmm. Clearly eat normal. So looking at it from that aspect, you know, I'll lean into Michelle. Another example, Michelle, she posted in the group once, like she went to a restaurant and she made a decision that she was going to eat her meal prep because she didn't want anything there. And that's what was important to her. Are you being abnormal? No, she's not being abnormal. There's nothing abnormal about that. Like, when are you going to be normal? Literally, it's like, why am I not normal? What what makes me not normal to want to be healthy and fuel my body? So thinking of like, it starts here, guys. So checking yourself when you start to have these conversations with yourself, because you will, and like, looking at it, zooming out and being, you know, is this a habit that I've created? Is this something I want to shift and change? How can I look at this differently? Another example is it doesn't always have to lean into unhealthy things. Like really what got me thinking about this a little bit more, and I haven't done a real on it in a while, I decided to quit Starbucks for 30 days. It had nothing to do with the fact that I drink shit at Starbucks. I do not go get your triple loan foam 
macchiato dripping with caramel, whatever thing. I don't know. Like I get, we all know I get a cold brew, right? But that, I, why did I decide to, to make that change? First of all, I looked at my freaking pocketbook and I was like, God, that's just got to stop. That's just not, I don't need that shit. But so that's how it started. But the realization after just seven days, one, I can tell you there was numerous times, this is what habits and values are. So put yourself in this place, right? This happens with the changing or the transformation that you're making, okay? So you can associate it with that. So as you're on this journey up here, you're going to have moments like this. So I quit Starbucks. 30 days. That's going to be easy. What the fuck do I care? I'm a couple days in and I'm like, automatic habit. I want to go. I use Starbucks as a reward. Fuck, I just had a good workout. I'm going to go have Starbucks. Seriously do it. Literally, it's an automatic thing because it's down here in this box. Okay? Start to head there. Ah, that's right. I quit. Damn yeah, you have cat. Like, I didn't quit caffeine. I didn't quit having a cold brew. I had it at home. Go home. Yeah, but I could just no. Nobody's gonna know. Just do, no. Okay, that happened several times, and I was like, damn. And then I there was another moment. I use it also as a way to maybe it's called soothe or distract myself if I start to get anxious. In like sitting in my office and I start to like, oh, there's a lot of shit going on here. I just got to like get my head right. I'll pop into my car or take a walk to Starbucks. I don't need to do that, but I have to keep reframing it. Does that make sense? So this, you can take this and make this applicable to your journey. So there's going to be moments, even when you think there shouldn't be anymore, when certain triggers come up in your life that maybe haven't come up. So Sarah, you could be cruising along doing really good. Megan could be cruising along. Carrie could be cruising along. Any of you, Jennifer could be cruising along and killing it in this journey. And then all of a sudden, er, Starbucks comes along. I'm using it as a metaphor. Because there's a trigger that shows up in your body, your feeling, your mind, because it's something that you still haven't tapped into down here wants to revert and go do that thing. Or maybe you have started to plateau and your mind goes, I've been here before. This shit isn't working. You start telling yourself story to do, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do, who's been there. And if you really zoom out and you go, you know, well, if I'm honest with myself, I haven't been a hundred percent in this nutrition plan. I, you know, I, I follow the plan, but you know, if there's some almonds over there, I grab a handful of them and yeah, I've gotten up because I was hungry and I don't like being hungry. So I had another, you know, half a cup of rice. I mean, that doesn't count because rice is on my nutrition plan, right? So that's cool. I was a little hungry. So I grabbed another rice cake or two. And that's okay. Cause I was hungry and you know, it's all right. Because your brain is saying to you, this shit didn't work before, it's not working again, so what the fuck? Just go ahead and do the thing, feed the hunger, and it's okay because this isn't going to work anyway. That is that voice, and there is probably something that triggered that voice to show up again that trigger could have been the fact that you may have plateaued for a couple of weeks and you may have plateaued for a couple of weeks, completely normal, 100% on the plan. And you're pissed because you don't understand it, which by the way, it's a normal thing to do. So then your little voice goes, well, fuck it. It doesn't work anymore. I'm just giving an example. Okay. I'm not saying that programming you, but like an example, because I know you guys very well. It's happened to me. I know a hundred percent of you has happened to. So I'm just going to have a little bit of this because it doesn't work anyway. So you have to zoom out. That's a habit. It's like me zipping off to Starbucks to comfort myself. Can you connect the two? Does that make sense? Lieutenant, does that make sense? Yes? No. We have to, as Stacy so pleasantly said to her us one time, parent ourselves. 
That's a really good way of looking at it, zooming out, looking at the big picture, but then understanding that this is a transformation and that you are stacking habits. And even somebody, I'll use Stacy as an example, that has been on this journey for a while, that has stacked the habits, has made the transformation, is living a decent, like she could, you could look at her and go, yes, yeah, she's a goat in here. She, as in anybody else, will still have triggers. They're going to come popping out of this box every once in a while as she's still trying to evolve to the promised land up here, this box up here that she's going for, the transformation. Like they're never going to go away. And it's because you got years of shit piled in that box. So I'm learning to like look at it for what it is and realize that you're on this journey and these things are going to happen <clears throat> and you're going to have to reassess and move forward sometimes. Does any of this make sense? <clears throat> the reassess too, guys, sometimes is reaffirming your goals. Am I where I want to be? Is this where I want to be? Do I want to push the envelope a little further? There's you and you know there's nothing wrong with having a straight line, but that's like the reality of it, and it takes just consistency and discipline. But once you're in and have made the transformation, all these little things become so much easier. But I want you to know that this is always going to be an ongoing thing. Hey, Jules, can I add something to that? Absolutely. Sorry, I look awful. Um, I, I always, I, I kind of look at these things as like roadblocks and dare I say addictions, mini addictions, maybe, maybe not as severe, but in my mind, they're addictions. And I'm like, how do I remove these roadblocks? Um, for me, when there's a trigger, I still want to have a drink mm -hmm. still, even though I quit drinking for six months, I only drink on Saturday evening with dinner. Like, I still want a drink. Mm -hmm. I can have alcohol in the house now um, and, and let it just sit there. It'll sit there. I think there's been um, my favorite Hefeweizen, German, actual German beer, sitting in my refrigerator for two months, and it's still sitting there. But I feel like I have, in my mind, I'm like, what is the barrier to my goals? What is the barrier to my healthy lifestyle? Or what are the barriers and once I identify those things, then I know, well, that's me wanting to do, it's being cognizant. Mm -hmm. And that's really the basis of psychology of going to a therapist, right? Now you've brought it to the forefront of your mind and you're aware. Awareness to me has been everything. So, and when I talk about parenting, you're like, I'm going to take that roadblock, that addiction, that thing that I'm trying to self-soothe or medicate with. Starbucks, I'm like you. I'm like, well, you know what? And then I'll go get a Starbucks. Yeah. Just finish this. And then I'll go get a Starbucks. <laughs> I like um, ice, um, unsweetened green tea with two stevia. That's my thing. Like a big, big one. Yeah. Um, and in my mind, green tea is good for me. But sometimes it's just something to go do to divert me from the thing that I don't want to be doing. And I'm like, okay, time box it. I'm like, I'm going to say, Alexa, she's going to go, hello, Stacey. But Alexa, set a timer for 50 minutes. 50 minutes. There, Starting there now. Sorry. Stop, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> but then by that time, I get myself in the mode. It's the same thing with strapping on your shoes and going to the gym, which I'm about ready to do. And it's busy as hell at freaking lifetime right now. And I'm like over it uh, and I don't want to go. And I went through and I know we've all been there. I know Jen has. We've talked about that. Um, and I think a lot of us can identify with this. I, I went through like a month, probably six weeks. Of, I did not want to go to the freaking gym. And that was my happy place for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like. Last week, I don't know, I I, don't know, I set like 10 new PRs or something crazy. Um, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, 
come on, because we got this, you know, in my mind, I'm like back, yeah. back. But I had to, whatever that barrier was, because I get really cozy. And now in my mind, I'm like, I'm starting my second career in two weeks from tomorrow. And I'm going to be fighting downtown Nashville traffic. And I got to get back into the mindset. And I'm like thinking again, what are my barriers? I got to get back up at 4.30. I got to blah, blah, blah. I got to blah, blah, blah. I gotta, and then I'm like reverting back. How do I comfort myself in this? My mind is already looking for those comforts. Yeah. So you're talking about this and I'm like, it, it all plays into what is it we tell ourselves to make us feel better and trying to replace it somehow. So maybe you can help me with that, you know, coaching me through that. You know, how do I... How do I replace those uncomfortable things? And maybe it's just, you know, you're going to feel better after you get out of the gym, you get in the shower, you know, it's just getting over that first hurdle. It's like jumping over a hurdle, getting out of bed at 430 when I'm not, haven't been doing that for like a year. I've been on a sabbatical for a very long time, but a lot of great things came out of sabbatical. Still married. <laughs> still married helped my sister through ovarian cancer she's still here and she's doing great a lot of great things so finding the good things um but the the mental how do you get yourself through that hard part it to me is the root cause of not doing the things that are good for us it's really good so I'll help you in a second, but like, so things that, so basically what Stacy just put, so your awareness, Stacy, is exactly right. So that's really what I'm referring to is we have this box of subconscious beliefs that really are never, that's what I say. Like you're, there's a lot of them that you guys have put to bed and you're going to continue to put together as you, as you have it stack and you change your values and beliefs, you change a value from <clears throat> I celebrate the holidays by eating chocolate covered cherries. I don't fucking know what you do, but you change that to now I celebrate the holidays by enjoying the time with my family and decorating the house. You, you see where I'm going, right? You switch that value and it doesn't even, once you do it, it doesn't matter. Um, and awareness is exactly what I was saying. Awareness is me being aware that, and that be, of the subconscious, I'm going to drive to Starbucks Okay, Stacy talked about you. Stacy, your awareness is that you know you drink the wine to soothe yourself. So once we create the awareness of it, now we get on our way to do it because we put the barrier in place or we said we recognize it, we're aware of it. So now when the action starts to happen, hold up, what the fuck am I doing? And then the opportunity comes to pivot. All right. And that's that where there's numerous things you can do. The five second rule, um, set your timer for five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever that might be, get yourself to do it. Or sometimes it's just the awareness alone is going to make you pivot. Um, so for me, I was like, I, it, it literally, and I think the more you do it, the faster it becomes like it happened five or six times for me. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm, I'm I'm determined to do this for 30 days because I believe that if I do this. And I do. I'm like, like, I don't drink anything unhealthy. Sometimes I do in the middle of the day. I don't drink coffee anymore. I go to Starbucks and get a Trenta iced tea too. You know, <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with I'll go get freaking, I like the people there. They're nice people. They know me. Like, I'm like, fucking cheers. I pull up and they're like, hey, Joel, you want your green? Like, they literally have it ready for me. So there's this thing, you know, there as well. So they're probably all like, where the hell is she? Anyway, so there's that awareness. So that's what I'm talking about is once we become aware and these things are just going to keep coming up. So for you, Stacey, like that's a classic example. Things can come back up again, guys when things change in life so you were on a sabbatical and you didn't have to get up at 4 30 in the morning anymore i got hit by a car and didn't work out for 20 months same thing you're right and there's no magic thing that i can say to you stacy besides you have to do the heavy lifting in the next 30 days you have to do the starbucks you have to do like what the example that i use is the alarm fucking goes off, you count to five and you get out of bed. 
You put the, you do whatever you need to do that your ass has to get out of bed. The phone might have to be in the kitchen. So your ass has to get out of bed to go shut the alarm off. And then when your body goes, go back to bed for a second, go do this, you go, no. And you put the shoes on and you just do it and you do it and you do it and you do it and it'll come back. I don't have a magic sauce for you, but you, you're going to have to. And that's what you all have to understand is there's going to be situations, <clears throat> things are going to happen to life. Triggers aren't always bad things. Triggers can be something like Stacy just talked about. She's now went from a sabbatical to going back to work. She's going to be triggered by an old subconscious habit of, I don't work out in the morning. That's not what I do. I work on this. It's not what I do is I do this. Like that's that like voice in your head that's telling you that's not who I am. That's not what I do. Now we have to reframe that again. Does that make sense, Stacey? I think also too, yeah, no, that's awesome. For me, having milestones is also very helpful because I've had milestones in the structure for 24 years. Uh, I know I've got this physical fitness test. Lisa will identify with this. I know I've got this. I know I've got that. And I know she did like this unhuman, crazy thing one time where she held a, a, a plank for like almost five minutes or something crazy. And she told me she was going to do it. So then in her mind, she was like, I told my commander I was going to do this. Now I got and she did it because she's Lisa. She's awesome. Um, but like if we say it to somebody else, and that was always my thing, right? If I said it, now I got to freaking do it. So now I'm like, careful what comes out of here because people are watching. Well, nobody's really watching me now, right? So it's just more about me and following through. Like if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I need to do it. Or what I'm thinking and what I'm setting milestones for myself don't matter anymore. Like, you have to be really careful with that. It's not just because of other people. Now it's because, right? So I think that while we're talking about this, because I have a plan for everything. Like, I have a moving plan. We're moving into a new house. We're closing on the 12th of November. Like, this morning I built a timeline with a plan. That's what we do. Um, I may not stick to the plan 100%, but I have a plan. So I feel like I just need to kind of, you no, know, I know that I need to build a plan, maybe make it a little flexible. Don't go crazy. Like, oh my God, I missed it by five minutes. You know, it's not like that, but just having some milestones, maybe reporting back, having the accountability with the tribe, with you, with Jen, with ourselves, um, having those accountabilities in place, I think would help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like we, you know, are given the tools and then sometimes we just need to revert back to the basics and just reset as life, you know, as we flow through life, right? Because again, like these things just happen and all of a sudden we get comfortable with, you know, the habits that we've created and built, but then something comes along or like you set yourself a new goal, like in my case, and shit needs to fucking change. And yes, it's uncomfortable. But again, you make that promise to yourself. And like bottom line is if you don't follow through with that promise to yourself, you're only cheating yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, one well, of the things that, you know, an old saying, um, I was a military intelligence officer was my first uh, branch in the military. And as a very young lieutenant, um, the, our motto was, and the, our instructor would say this to us all the time, embrace the suck. It sucks to be you, but I'm like, it doesn't suck to be me anymore. But I'm what I learned from that is like, this is hard and you're going to double down. But then you're going to look back and be like, damn it, I just did that. Fuck yeah, <laughs> I did it. Fuck yeah. And I, I texted <laughs> that to you. I texted that to Jen the other day. I was like, fuck yeah. And um, yeah. because I'm like, I hear you. I'm like at the rack and I'm like, there's all these people around me and I've got loud rock and roll in my ears because that's how I roll. And I'm like, Fuck yeah, but, but embracing that, like whatever that hard thing is, I know in my, like I learned to swim at 30 years old. I was terrified of the water and they were like, yeah, you're going to swim with a rifle over your head in 12 feet of water in full gear. I was like, 
Uh, don't tell me what I got to do. Like that end goal, I know it's there. And let me know where my, but that held me accountable to getting, like I took lessons four days a week for almost a year to yeah. be able to do that. So I need to set more milestones mm -hmm. and yeah. going through the program. Takes time. Yeah. Going through this program, I'm like over two years now, like two and a half years. And it's taken me through evolutions of my life now. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the transformation. Take, yeah. That's the <laughs> transformation. And it's going to take me into the next evolution the next step with new people. I'm going to be working at, right in the state capital here in, in Tennessee. Like there's, there's a lot of opportunities and growth and things to do there and things where I can carry, you know, my experience and learn new things um, mm -hmm. and make my stamp and, and continue that legacy somewhere. Cause that's important. Right. But, uh, but yeah, the mind is limitless. It is, it is. And that's, but that's why the tribe, that's why this program and I was afraid, like I was like one or two days late for renewing and I had, like texted Jules and I was like, oh, don't drop me. Like, please. Oh my God. I can't believe I'm over it. Like I needed that. I need the group because it holds me accountable. It keeps me where I want to be. It keeps me moving grounded. forward, yep. grounded, moving forward, yep. accountable. So much more than a diet. People say, oh, you're on that right? diet. Yeah. 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 I, I for yeah. sure. That's another fuck moment. Fuck them. <laughs> Just fuck yeah. And that's like, yeah, and you're right. So guys, like, yes, all of this, like, take that in. Like, you're always going to have these little different um, situations. And so those of you that are brand new that are still, you know, tuning in, like, remember, that's what is so important about the foundation, because it also is going to help you have more awareness. But even so, as you're going through, have that awareness of the things that are happening. Be super honest with yourself about what's happening and then take the liberty to have the discipline to make the changes. Even if it's, I'm being funny right now, stop drinking Starbucks. Like sometimes you need to challenge yourself on shit, you know, like you can take the easy way out and keep drinking the fucking Starbucks. Or you can set yourself, hold yourself accountable. And like Stacy said, like, you know, there are ways. So uh, the uh, last thing that I want to tap into here is she brought up a point. And this is why we have stretch goals. Stretch goals are not how well flexible you are. Stretch goals are not a goal that you say, I'm going to eat healthy. That's my stretch goal. Fuck that shit. Every single person in here, if you ever put eat healthy and work out as your stretch goal, I'm going to send your, your freaking and Jen, you have permission to do it too. Send your fucking report back to you and tell you to do it again. A stretch goal is what we're talking about, like with what Stacy said. So uh, she used an example of she had the accountability of fitness tests. Jen had a stage goal. I had a stage goal. The reason why I use stretch goals is I'm very well aware due to my own self transforming of what Stacy was relying on. You need that outside big goal. Now, many of you don't have the luxury and Stacy doesn't have it now either. So she's having to learn to do what I ask all of you guys to do and create a stretch goal for yourself. And that's why it needs to be a stretch goal. One that you look at that feels super uncomfortable to you. Something that you don't think you can do. And the reason behind it is if you promise yourself that that's something that you're going for and it's visible to you, it is like having that fitness test that you have to get fit for the marathon that you're training for, the bodybuilding, like you don't have to do, you don't have to have a fitness test. You don't have to compete. You don't have to want to be an iron woman. You don't have to do any of those things, but you have to have a stretch goal. And that's why those are important. And it should be something that feels super fucking uncomfortable to you. And then you create non-negotiables 
But those are the things that you create that support that stretch goal. Because if I don't do these three things consistently, I'm never going to get there. And then your weekly goals, those are just things that you're committing to every week because every single week, things are going to look different because you're not going to be perfect all the time up here to get to that stretch goal. Those non-negotiables are going to wheedle a little bit sometimes. So the weekly goals are there to go get your fucking shit together with this so you hit that goal, that non-negotiable. Does that make sense? So like here it is. It's recorded. Jen's heard it. You all heard it. Anybody that listens back to it, y'all are going to get your forms back if you have lackadaisy uh, stretch goals in there. They're getting sent back. It's going to be do over. Stretch goals. So today is Tuesday. Lucky all of you. You got all week to think about what your stretch goal is. So is it to wear a bikini? I don't care. And it's your stretch goal. It doesn't have to look like anybody else is here. Your stretch goal could be to be a size smaller. That's cool. Your stretch goal could be, I want to look good in a little black dress for Christmas. And maybe that little black dress is one size smaller than you are, not two size smaller. That's cool. Specifically, if to you, it feels unachievable. But to you, it's like, I don't think I could do that. It could be whatever it is. But you have to create those stretch goals because that's what's going to hold you to your non-negotiables because you're looking at, for example, this is what goes through your mind. Man, I'm just going to go off on something today. You're in a bikini competition. We're just going to use this as an example. You're in a bikini competition. You know that you have to stand on stage on November 20th in a fucking small bikini. You show up every fucking day. Every day you look at that date and you go, I'm going to be standing on stage in front of a hundred people in a bikini. Yeah, fuck, I'm going to the gym. Yeah, fuck, I ain't going to eat off plan. You can do the same thing for yourself. All that is, is you holding a promise to yourself. She's not on here anymore, but if Jen could as easily as any of you deviate it. The only thing that she would have hurt is herself. She wouldn't have gone on stage because neither me nor her prep coach would have allowed her. So she's no different than any of you. All that she did was create a stretch goal that was a goal of her. So your stretch goals can be whatever you want. It's she's no different in the fact that she had to hold herself to that promise every single day. So Stacy's got to hold herself to whatever promise she creates for herself every day. Your stretch goal might be to get up at 430 in the morning and go to the gym. Cool. That's where that if that's what is a stretch goal for you. Now, if you're new, that's not really where it is. I, you know, for <laughs> Stacy, she's like right where she wants to be. But whatever that stretch goal is, you have to put it out there and it should be big and huge. The more uncomfortable it makes you feel, the better goal that it is. And then you put into place, what are the things? Stacy is at the weight that she'd like to be. She's pretty much at the goal that she wants to be. Let's just say, for example, I'm going to put it in out there. I don't know if this is what she wants. Stacy wants bigger glutes, better wheels, more shapely arms. In order to do that, her non-negotiable, and she might have a picture of a woman with big ass booty, right? Let's just say she's got it pinned on her wall. That's her goal. She's going to have a big ass booty. Well, her non-negotiable, I just helped her right now. Her non-negotiable in order to get that big ass booty or whatever that is that she desires, that shape, that body, She's got to get her fucking ass out of bed at 4.30 in the morning. That's her now her new non-negotiable because her stretch goal is that. Again, I just made this shit up, but her stretch goal is to have guns on her and a big ass booty and a snap. You know, she wants to look like a freaking bodybuilder. I don't know. But in order to achieve that result, one of her non-negotiables, she's got to get up at 4.30 in the fucking morning and go to the gym, period, the end. 
So you just have to replace the thing, Stacy. It's not a fitness test anymore. You got to create that goal, whatever that image is. And the best thing that you can do is cut that sucker out, put it on a post-it note or on a vision board and be like, bitch, I'm coming for you. And that's <laughs> the vision board. And you guys have heard me talk about like the power. Almost everything on my vision board has come true this year. And so I do have a picture of um, a super, like two, two pictures, super fit, the abs that won't quit in the bikini, you know, and maybe it's like thinking about the next vacation too, you know, and just, you know, moving in that direction. Um, but then I also like to, you know, I also, and you've seen this with my stretch goals, Jules, and you have sent them back to me. You're like, dig deeper. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't have time to dig deeper, but I'm going to make time to dig deeper because it's important. <laughs> um, if you don't have a strategy for your life, you're just running around in circles and you have no, no goal. You got to have a strategy for it. But I, um, building that, those stretch goals, I also like to have things intellectually and professionally in there. And so one of the things that I, that I've done recently is I joined Toastmasters. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but it's good. I get myself up in front of people. And then I've had people say to me, you know, here over the past couple months, thank you for your mentorship. And then we're not even in the army anymore. And I'm like, I didn't even realize I was doing that, but that motivates me to keep pushing myself to become better mm -hmm. intellectually, professionally, mentally. I'm constantly educating myself. So I include those things in my stretch goals too, but it all goes in a line with a healthy body and clean living it all goes hand in hand for me. Like I can't separate those things. It's just like, you shouldn't. right. That discipline, it, it all goes in together. So with my stretch goal and I have done that and I'm, that's what I'm going to get back to doing. I was thinking about that right before you said it, it was like, it's funny because you just said it, but having that post it on the, like the remembering, yeah. why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It becomes so ingrained. You say it, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You say you can't do something. You're not going to do it because you just, prophesied that you weren't going to do it if I say I'm going to do it I'm going to do it it's going to happen so the post-its there's so much power in having a post-it for me the power behind Just, the post-it <laughs> the power behind the post-it and then I have had put my stretch goals on my whiteboard I just write them out and then I see it every time I go into my office yes. so yep yeah all of those are powerful I love it guys good call uh, hopefully this was informative, helped all of you. I look forward to seeing all your new amazing stretch goals and your non-negotiables to go along with them. Does anybody have any questions before I too take my happy butt to the gym? Have a good day, guys. Appreciate you. See you at the gym, Stacey. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> Let's go do it. Let's go. <laughs> Bye.